this is a continuation of our build project, which was a couple episodes back, and we can link to that in the description. Chris has skillfully cut a platform made out of starboard. We were going to go with wood for this platform, but realized starboard, this composite material, is way better for a damp environment. We're going to be fixing the back of bilge pump and the float switch on this, and so right now I'm gonna start drilling the holes for it. This is the wire drop that the electrician left in our bilge. This is the other side. This is gonna need to go to this, and this is gonna need to go to the battery, and I don't really know yet. <laughs> right now I'm tying the bilge pump positive to the float switch. Normally, I try to avoid cramming two wires into one butt connector, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just a funny sentence. <laughs> Normally, I would never try to cram two wires into a butt <laughs> connector. <laughs> it's because I'm saying cram and butt. Okay, go one. Is there Sorry. a different word I should use? I don't know. Normally, no, I wouldn't I try laugh. to fit two wires into a butt connector. Normally, you shouldn't try to squeeze two wires into a butt connector like this. It's best to use a terminal block, which I have some. But this is going to be so far down in our bilge, it's just not very functional for me to like... I don't even know if I can fit in there to install a terminal block. So this is gonna have to do, deal with it, Don Casey. When you're installing any sort of automatic bilge pump, meaning you're gonna have an option at some panel somewhere to either switch it to auto or manual, you're either gonna have a float switch like this one, or the pump itself is gonna have a built-in float switch. Either way, you're dealing with three wires coming out of your bilge. All right, check it out. We have our float switch and bilge pump. From the float switch, we have two wires. These are the same color, so it's a little confusing, but you can use either one. From the pump, we have two more wires, a positive and a negative. The positive from the pump is gonna tie together to one of the lines from the float switch, doesn't matter which one. Negative, we're gonna extend, and this is all going to your switch that hopefully has a built-in fuse. So this is roughly what the back of our switch looks like. It won't be labeled like this on the switch, but there will be documents that come with it that tell you what post is what. So we have auto that runs to one side of the float switch. We have manual that runs to the line that is tied together between your pump positive and the other side of the float switch. This is for the fuse. The fuse, one side is gonna go to your battery positive. The other side is just gonna be a short line over to the middle. Finally, negative. That comes from the pump as well, pump positive and negative. For ours also, this negative will also be jumped over to the battery negative. Finally, if you have a pump with a built-in float switch, it is already gonna have three wires for you. One will be negative, then you'll have a positive for auto and a positive for manual. Usually these two positives are marked with one being solid and one being striped, but regardless, they're still gonna come up and attach the same way. We've got our manual auto. This is our bilge pump control panel. We've got auto off and manual. It's pretty much never gonna be off. It'll pretty much always be on auto. It has a built-in fuse, which you can see right in here. There's a fuse in that. And so behind here, you get to make a cute little jumper cable between the fuse and the switch. It's just gonna tie like that. It is actually a beautiful day. It's finally starting to feel like spring. Boom. That's 
what? You measure twice, cut once. What I'm doing now is making up the main positive line that's gonna connect the battery to the switch. This is the main power feed. Remember, bilge pumps should be an unswitched load, meaning even when your battery switch is off, power can still run to the bilge pump. If you leave your boat and you turn your power switch to off and something fails, a seacock fails, you want your bilge pump to still come on. The main battery positive is gonna come into this post so that the current is flowing through the fuse before it even gets to the switch. This is our manual positive. This is where we will attach our float switch positive. And this is gonna be the negative going back to a negative bus. It's been a long winter. Our vlog has basically become a chronicle of Chris's beard. All right, good afternoon. It is day two. I had to push pause yesterday because I wanted to get some different colored wire to differentiate the automatic positive from the manual bilge pump positive. Here we have the final wire I need to attach to the switch, which is for automatic being the float switch. So I'm gonna do the final test. This is on auto. With this touching the post, nice, manual. I think we're good to put this thing in. So this is what we'll be holding our pump and float switch setup. I had an afterthought of routing all the wires up the interior of this pipe. However, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to leave a lot of slack in the wires so that this can extend all the way out of the deep bilge before we can even get to anything. So it's gonna be hidden from, the view, from view anyways. So I will have the wiring coming on the outside. I've got the PVC glue on here, but a little extra reinforcement probably can't hurt. Here we have the finished product. Now because of our extremely limited access, this is gonna have to be assembled in the bilge, which is not gonna be easy or fun, but it's kind of the only way to make this happen. I'm gonna slide this in, try and slide the PVC into this, crank down on the locking nuts, and then last we will fit the bilge pump onto the base. Don't worry, I have already checked and made sure that this will fit in there. It's gonna be pretty much impossible to film because there's just not enough space. My body is just gonna be blocking any kind of shot, even with a GoPro on my head. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, hope it works, and then get the camera back on once it's down there. Good morning, it is day three of our backup bilge pump project. And yesterday, Chris finished all the wiring. We just filled up the bilge with water and we are going to test it out. It was not easy getting that stuff hooked up and wired in inside the bilge. It's really limited access, which is why we couldn't film anything. If everything's working as it should, the last step is gonna be to install a high water alarm. This way we will know when water is coming up above the normal level. Okay, so this is simulating a higher lift than what our pump is actually gonna have to deal with but this way we can see it and keep it away from the hull of the boat. We haven't drilled the through hole yet. We are just testing this out. Here goes manual. Yay! Hold it up a little higher. Nice. Now I'm gonna switch it to auto. Auto is what it's pretty much always gonna be on because this is just a backup pump. This thing's gonna click on when we don't know water is coming in. I hear it. Success. This is so relieving. So everything is functioning properly. We can't put the through hole in until we're back in our summer marina when we can come in stern two. There's not enough water here for us to back in to put in the, the new through hole. So we're gonna keep the hose easily accessible in a locker. So if we do have an emergency in the meantime, 
we can just pull the hose out and throw it over um, and throw it over the side and drain the water out that way. Next step is installing the high water alarm, which will trigger when the float switch is engaged. Oh yeah, buddy. This is the final test. I believe I have everything wired up correctly. I've got our primary bilge pump turned off. I've already filled up the bilge, almost past the level of our backup bilge pump. So our primary bilge pump right now is submerged. So I'm simulating a situation where water is coming in either too quickly for the primary bilge pump to keep up with, or the primary bilge pump has failed completely. If I did everything right, the pump should go off and the alarm should go off. It worked. I had to turn it off really fast because that is loud. We have it mounted. We're going to have it mounted near our companionway. So if anyone is around our boat and we're not around, they'll know something's wrong and can come check it out too. Man, I am so wrecked. I was not expecting this project to take almost three full days, but it is done and it works perfectly. I am so stoked with how this turned out. The peace of mind that this is gonna give us. It's a little bit less than a foot above our primary bilge pump, and so as soon as the water gets to that float switch, we're gonna hear an alarm, and our second bilge pump is gonna turn on, which is a higher capacity than our primary one. This is a box on the list I've been waiting to check for a long time, and I could not be more stoked.